You were probably in your home for only three to six months as a homeowner before you got your first letter saying, I have a buyer for your home. Would you like to sell it? Well, at best case, that is a real estate agent that wants to be a listing agent that is veiling their attempt to become it by suggesting that they have or presenting that they have a buyer for your home. Now, if you've been in your home for a minute, maybe you've been there for seven or 10 years, maybe this sounds like a great idea. But let's find out whether it's a lie or a truth and how you'll be able to size it up the next time you hear it. My name is Andrew Finney and my passion is helping you make sense of real estate. If you need help finding a top agent near you or if you simply want to drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Thank you. All right, my friend, the reason that I'm making this video is because one of the reasons that the public, you and some others mistrust real estate agents are because some real estate agents tend to stretch the truth or flat out lie. I don't want you to be deceived and I want to increase transparency in real estate so that you, the public trust trusted real estate advisors to help guide you and be your mentor in the home selling and buying process. So to size this up and to really know what's going on here, let's take a deep dive into the, I have a buyer for your house call that you've likely received or the letter. One of the first things to probably consider is why would an agent do this anyways? Well, some real estate agents, if they feel like they can rationalize it in their head, it's not a lie. I do have a buyer. I didn't say they were looking for your home, but I do have a buyer right now. Well, come on now. If it's not for your house, then why do they send you a letter or why do they call you and tell you they have a buyer for your house, right? It's one of the ways that some real estate agents will approach homeowners to see if they want to sell their home as opposed to just flat out asking or flat out looking to see if there's a need there or providing you with some kind of a value that as a homeowner that you would appreciate. Another reason that this happens is that if you have your home on the market as a for sale by owner, known as a FSBO for sale by owner, you are probably getting bombarded by phone calls, letters, people just stopping by your house at random times. I have a buyer for your house. Work with me. Work with me. Well, why would they want to do that? In reality, they know, according to the National Association of Realtors Research and Statistics Department, who performs deep dive analysis of this all the time about statistics, they know that a for sale by owner will hire a real estate agent 87% of the time, and they want to be the agent in the right place at the right time when that for sale by owner says, hey, you know what? The heck with this. This is actually much harder than I thought. I don't like it, and I need to hire a real estate professional to help me get this done, I realize now that I jumped off the deep end and I couldn't swim in that area. So the first thing to take a look at is why do these people lie? Well, it's because you, the public, don't even question it. They say, I have a buyer for your house. And you say, okay, I'm interested or I'm not interested as opposed to saying, oh really, what's that buyer's name and where are they moving from? Or what's their story? Tell me about them, right? Those are a few probing questions, by the way, that you could quickly turn the tables on a would-be solicitor that is saying, hey, I have a buyer for your house, or my favorite ones are the ones I even get as a trust real estate advisor that simply call in, and it could be a robocall of some kind, which by the way is illegal. Hello, I'm Android Finney, trusted real estate advisor and real human being. I can help you sell your home for 200% of what you bought it for. In fact, I have five different buyers all ready to go. But there's still some people using it. And they simply say, hi, I am so-and-so with XYZ Brokerage and I have a buyer looking in your area. I'm like, what area is that? How do you know you're in my area? The quickest telltale right out of the gate is what comes out of their mouth. Now, let's say that somebody called me and they said, I have a buyer that's actually looking in Providence. And in specific, they want this subdivision and they are moving here from California. Hmm. Now we might actually have a true story going on here. But the reason ultimately that a real estate agent would lie is because they're simply not called out on it. They have rationalized it in their own head that it was okay to do this. You see, some of these agents actually spend a lot of money or in their opinion, probably are investing a huge sum of money in sales training and coaching. Now, I am a strong proponent of sales training. I do believe that it makes for a better agent at the end of the day. However, if they are being trained or coached in a way that is deceitful, I am all against it. The best thing that we can do as trusted real estate advisors is simply be straight up, simply be honest. And if we're going to pick up the phone to give you a call, shouldn't we have a purpose in life for doing so? The same way that whenever you make a call to somebody, you're calling with a purpose in life to do so. So if you get a call from me, I'm calling you for a purpose in life because there's a value that I'm looking to provide and either it's going to be a fit or it's not going to be a fit. That's the only time you're going to hear from me if you don't know me. So this is something to consider and it's something to think about as to why they do 
it. I'm asking you to call them out on the spot, not saying that you gotta get frisky with them, you don't gotta be argumentative with them, but just if you are interested, say, who's the buyer? Tell me about them and see what the agent says. And then if they say, well, I'm working with a lot of buyers right now and I don't know if your home can be the right fit until I see it. That's another one of the deceits is, well, I don't really know if it's the right fit until I see it. Does that make sense? Well, you see, here we go again down a very slippery slope and one that we should not be going down in real estate in my humble opinion we need to just be straight up if they want your listing shouldn't they just straight up say hey you know what are you looking to sell a house if you were to move where would you go next they ask you something like that and you say hey yeah i am actually thinking about selling my house how'd you know well no reason i was just calling your community to see if somebody wanted to sell their house no harm no foul in that approach at least it was straight up it was honest and you knew why they were calling you because they cut to the chase and you could easily say yeah i'm interested or no i'm not interested but the person that then turns around and says well i have to see your house to know if it's the right fit for my buyer who may or may not even exist well we have a problem i'm asking you to be honest with yourself and to ask an agent if you do have that interest of potentially selling your home who's the buyer and where are they coming from? Tell me about them. Let me give you a good case in point from my own real estate career that back in 2014 that I actually did do. I had some buyers that were moving to Las Vegas, Nevada from Utah and they were seriously like one community. They were literally one community. They're like, Andrew, when a home comes up that's at least 1700 square foot in that house, I want that house. Please let me know. I was like, you know, this community has extremely low turnover. It's only a community of like 200 homes and maybe over the course of 12 months, there's like four sales. I mean, extremely, extremely low turnover because the people that were there were original owners or they just really, really loved their houses so much that very few people ever sold them. So I actually did give them a call and I would introduce myself as, hi, my name is Andrew Finney with King Realty Group. The reason that I'm calling you today is I'm working with a buyer and I would say my buyer's name from Utah. And what they're looking for is a home that's at least 1700 square foot in your area. Now, I'm not sure if that's your house or not. Could you please help me and let me know if you've heard of any of your neighbors or potentially even yourself that may be considering moving? And that's how I called and called and called. Well, on week number three of calling this community, guess what happened? We found somebody that was open-minded to selling their house and ultimately those buyers from Utah were able to make good on it. But what was the difference in between what I shared with you a moment ago to what I just shared with you now? The difference was I realistically had a buyer and I realistically was looking in that specific community and I could share with a prospective home seller what the situation was for the buyer without violating any privacy of my client other than just their name and where they were moving from and that they were already pre-approved. Those were the three criteria that I provided. So based upon that, I was able to get a dialogue going and now they're in that home and what you know it, even since 2014, they're still there. I don't expect that they'll ever move from that community because they were diehard on that community and would not buy a house for anywhere in the entire city of Las Vegas, Henderson, Semlin, North Las Vegas areas until that home in that community came up. You see, there's a difference in between truth versus lie. So please make sure that you know the difference difference the next time someone calls you. So the second thing to consider is how do real estate agents find home buyers anyways? Well, there's a lot of ways they can find home buyers. And one of those ways is by listing a home. Obviously a listing is going to attract a buyer, right? The same way you as a prospective home seller would want an agent to be able to attract buyers. Well, once you have said listing, a listing agent's going to turn into marketing that listing ideally and doing everything they can to get it sold. As a result of that, they're going to accumulate buyers that are interested in that area. That's one way they can do it or they can actually solicit for buyers by calling apartments or potentially investing in online marketing methods to entice a buyer to sign up or maybe pay sites like Zillow for the opportunity to market on that website to attract prospective home buyers. Where this is going is to understand why these agents have taken these tactics, not that they're excusable because they really aren't. If someone is lying to you and they're a real estate agent, they shouldn't do that. And if you're a real estate agent watching this video right now and you're using these shady tactics to try to entice someone to list their home, stop it. And stop it, please, and stop it now, because it's not okay to do that. What is okay to do is to be honest, straight up with people. You would want the same thing, wouldn't you? So let's do the right thing by the public, let's do the right thing by the industry, and let's increase transparency and honesty so everybody can trust. Whenever they hear a trusted real estate advisor, they know that is someone they can trust. So 
let's take a look at why an agent is going to want to list your home and what the steps are that a lot of them are going to do, at least ways five common things almost all agents are going to do to sell your home and to get buyers. The first thing they're going to do is obviously put up a for sale sign unless it's a violation of your HOA rules, right? Shocker here that a for sale sign in front of your house will actually attract 10% of the time a home buyer will call on that sign. They'll take a flyer out of the box and call that listing agent. The second way they're going to find buyers is host an open house. Now it is important to note that generally speaking that when you host an open house that perhaps maybe one to three percent of the time a buyer will actually walk into that house that wants to buy your house. The rest of the time maybe three to five percent of the time it's just somebody that's looking around and wanting to go to an open house because maybe they're bored that day or maybe they just want to scope out some property or perhaps most realistically they're one to two years in advance of buying and they want to start getting an idea of what kind of homes are for sell and see them in person as opposed to look at pictures. Well, this turns into prospective home buyers. So it doesn't mean they're going to buy your home. It doesn't mean that even if they are in the market that they're pre-approved to buy your home. It doesn't mean that they're qualified to buy your home. It's another method though that an agent could use to find home buyers. It just might not be for yours. The third thing and the most obvious here is that most listing agents are going to put your house on the multiple listing service unless you have signed an MLS exclusion because for some reason you don't want the extra exposure. Well, here's the thing. In most cases, you would probably want the additional exposure because that's how your home is ultimately going to sell more than likely because other real estate agents around the same area in the same multiple listing service known as the MLS are going to actually have buyers set up on home searches. And when this happens through the MLS, they're going to get an immediate notification when that listing agent pushes publish on your home's listing. Then they're going to get those calls from those buyer agents wanting to set appointments with you. So here's the beauty of having that multiple listing service and the beauty of how to entice people to your home by first knowing how to get it ready Ready for the market, what's going to cause it to be sellable, and to move forward with that. But I've already made a lot of other videos about that, so I'm not going to go into it now. If you want to check those out, check them out after watching this one. The fourth way they're going to find buyers is by simply networking with other agents. They're going to let their office know, they're going to let the agents that they know, and they're going to ideally reach out to the other top performing agents in that area area that specialize in that area because it's highly likely those agents may have buyers for that house. If they reach out to enough of them, we look at the probability of that and we increase the odds of finding the right buyer for your house. The fifth thing that they're likely to do is to design a flyer for your box and put it out in your box or they might be marketing that same flyer by email blasting the entire network or the multiple listing service whether or not they have a buyer or not. Essentially throwing a lure into the pond to see what fish might buy. So now more tech savvy agents will be far more aggressive on how they approach this. A top listing agent, a top agent in general, a top trusted real estate advisor is going to use all resources available and not be content with just commonplace things that get commonplace results. They truly thrive and nerd out on how to get a listing sold and the steps that are involved with it and understanding how to share that with you as, an, as a prospective home seller that want to make it happen. They'll start deep diving into social media and go into how they're going to do their Facebook marketing, their Instagram marketing, how they're going to do YouTube marketing if they're planning on doing that. Maybe like obviously a video of a home tour and giving people an idea of what that home looks like before they even get there so that the buyers that ideally go see your home home are the serious buyers because they've already seen a walkthrough of it and the pictures of it. So you see where that's going up, how aggressive you can get as a listing agent and there's so many other things. But as opposed to give away the whole marketing playbook, what I would suggest to you is to listen to what an agent would do to find a buyer for your home more than listen to the agent say, I have a buyer for your home. Great. How'd you find this buyer? And what are you going to do to find one for my home? Unless you truly do. The third thing to understand is what are pocket listings? Pocket listings aren't exactly my favorite thing in the world, I kind of think they're a little bit dirty. And let me explain why they're like having dirt at the bottom, lint at the bottom of your pocket. Just not nice, not pretty. And the reason being is that pocket listing by its very definition and the reason why it's being called that is like an agent having a listing and tucking it in their pocket. Nobody knows it. It's out of sight. It's out of mind. The only people that know about it is you, the agent, 
and the agent's broker and anyone they might share it with, but it's not exposed on the multiple listing service. So why would somebody do this, right? Well, some people have a high value on their privacy and generally in the higher end market, you might sometimes see this a little bit more commonplace because they value their privacy more than the money itself they could get as a result of the home sale. This realistically does happen by the way. And they don't want people to know their home is on the market or maybe their home is so wonky, it is so decked out to their taste because they had the money to splurge on it and make it the way they wanted with their own eccentricities and eclectic style that they know that it's not going to appeal to the majority of home buyers that's going to take a specific buyer with a lot of money that's going to have the desire to renovate said property. So in that case, it might be held as a pocket listing within that brokerage who is sharing it with potential home buyers that they may have in their overall home buyer pool, if you will, and sending it out to them to see who might be interested in that property. Now, the reason that it becomes a little bit dirty, at least in my professional opinion is because it isn't exposed on the open market. And where the problem exists on this is it could result in a lower sales price for a prospective home seller. It could also result in lack of competition for the home or lack of obviously exposing it to as many viable home buyers as possible to view the home and ultimately make an offer. So that could take more and more time. The other reason is it starts entering what's called dual agency. Now, when you look at dual agency, dual agency in some states is illegal. In some states, it is not here in Las Vegas, Nevada, dual agency is perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with it. So long as the agent, the listing agent in this case, has both the consent to act from you, the home seller, and from the home buyer at the same time. You see, with a dual agency, you're essentially putting an agent's fiduciary duties, which is to represent a client's best interest. So obviously, if you were selling your home with an agent, they're representing your best interest by fiduciary law, known as a duties owed, that they would have given to you, should have given to you the very first form before you even looked at anything else. They're going to be doing the same thing with a prospective home buyer that says, hey, I'm going to represent your best interest too. Well, those fiduciary duties can be thought of as like an old car where a real estate agent needs to provide you with obedience, loyalty, full disclosure, maintain your confidence, give you what's called full accounting and reasonable skill and care. Well, how does an agent represent the best interest of you and the best interest of a buyer at the same time when by the very nature of generally buying and selling a home, they may be at odds where the buyer wants the best deal possible, seller wants the best deal possible. How does this work? So you can see the conflict of interest that could potentially arise from a dual agency situation. Now, obviously you do want that information disclosed and keep in mind the form, at least in Las Vegas, Nevada, the way that it's termed is a consent to act in that situation. And you do have the option to say, you don't want that to happen and that that buyer needs to have their own agent. It's up to you at the end of the day. Just something to think about, something to consider. You have one message. Message one. Hello, seller. It's Android Finney here. All right, my friends. Now let's take a closer look at 20 questions to ask a listing agent and 21 hard facts to know about selling your house. Looking forward to our next conversation. We'll see you in a few.